Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome to my rigging channel. We're in part 6 of my advanced deformation tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to concentrate on starting the weight painting process. So since that process usually takes quite a bit of time, let's get going right away. I've went ahead and parented several of my meshes to the armature already. Now the eyes and the hair mesh are going to be non-deforming meshes, so I just parented them, selected them, and parented them directly to the deformation bone for the head. So now they are parented to that. I have parented the skin mesh and the body mesh to the um, armature with armature to form and automatic weights so it is ready to go. And I've parented the um, clothing meshes with just armature to form and that just added the armature modifier to this mesh although it did not add any vertex groups. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to be transferring the weights from the body mesh to those clothing meshes. And basically I'm going to get the whole weight painting on these for free. Now whenever you have tight fitting clothing like this, if your underlying topology matches the skin topology or your body mesh topology very well, which mine does because I duplicated parts of my main body mesh to create these um, clothing meshes, it's going to deform nearly identical if you just transfer the weights uh, to that mesh. So I'm basically going to get three meshes weight painted for free just by doing all the work on my main body mesh here. Now this is again parented or already done with automatic weights. I just need to transfer these weights to these meshes. So I'm going to select the, the mesh that has the weights to transfer from. That is my body mesh. Shift select the one I'm going to transfer to. I'm going to tab into weight paint mode and under tools I can just do weights, transfer weights and then set up my um, settings here. So the data type I want to transfer is vertex groups. I want create data checked the vertex mapping that I'm going to be using is nearest face interpolated or nearest edge interpolated also works very well. I'll use nearest face interpolation. Make sure that object transform is checked. Then we need source layer by name to destination layer all layers mix mode replace and that is basically it. Now both of my meshes should deform relatively the same. Now when you do add your modifiers and parent Make sure that your armature modifier is above your subdivision surface modifiers and then I always like to enable my edit mode toggles and preserve volume for all of my deforming meshes. I'm going to do the transfer for the top mesh as well. This will even be quicker. Weights, transfer weights, all my settings are the same from the last operation and the top is now ready. And now we're ready to clean up the uh, weight paint from auto weights. You can see that if I roll my leg up we're getting some bad deformations. Now the way that auto weights works is basically you can almost think of every deformation bone in the rig as a light bulb or a glow stick. It's just going to light up and cast light on the inside of the mesh and wherever that light is the strongest that is going to be the strongest weights. Now whenever you have a tubular structure such as the legs and the arms and the fingers the auto weight's going to do really well. However if you have a large open cavity such as the torso and in the head that is where you will get um, some errors and you'll need to do some cleanup. So that is basically what the first cleanup, uh, the first pass of weight painting is going to be, is going to be for cleanup. Let me quickly talk about some settings that I'll be using for weight paint. I'm going to tab into weight paint mode and you can see that I have this black shading and that is because I have enabled the show zero weights to the active group that I have selected. If you have none, you're going to have this blue canvas and it's very hard to see where your low boots weights are. So uh, low blue weights are very low weights and it's very difficult to see where they stop when it's blue on blue so that is why I like to enable that. I have unified settings for my brushes size, strength, and weight and I'm also using X mirror. I have a symmetrical mesh so that is going to work for me. If you have an unsymmetrical mesh or non-symmetrical mesh rather you may need to use topology mirror which it will do its best to um, transfer the weights from one side to the other if your mesh is not symmetrical. Now for my brushes, typically you'll have six or t eight brushes by default. I have reordered these by renaming my add brush to A underscore add and A underscore subtract. That is because subtract, these brushes will always line up in alphabetical order, which means subtract will be on the end. And in this way I can just use one and two to switch between add and subtract. Add and subtract are the only brushes that I typically use for weight painting. I also like to always enable wireframe mode during weight painting and that will get rid of the shine of solid mode and I'll also reveal the topology of the mesh that I'm weight painting. 
One other option that I typically have on is auto normalize. I always have this on for almost every um, operation. However, the very first pass that I'm going to be do is is the only exception, and the reason for that is when you add, if you're to subtract weights from a group, it's going to add to other groups. And basically, what I'm going to be doing in this pass is just subtracting the influence from areas that I don't want influenced. Um, uh, where auto weighting is basically influenced too far into the mesh or where I don't want that influence and if you were to subtract those weights and it adds it to another weight you'd basically be chasing your weights around so this is the only reason I am not using auto normalize for this pass I will normalize at the end after I do a cleaning pass and I'll show this so let's just get in and do this first um, cleanup pass basically all I'm going to do is select every deformation bone uh, one after the other and just remove weights where it has extended the weights, auto weighting has extended the weights too far. So the basic rule of thumb is with the head bone selected, if I look at the neck bone, I am I have influence that's more than halfway past that neck bone and I just want to subtract those weights. So I'm just going to quickly delete them or subtract them and then I'll just move on to the next bone and this is going to be a very quick pass. Now you can see that the neck bone has quite a bit of influence in the head and that is absolutely not what I want. The head is pretty much a hard surface object. It does have some skin, but it's mainly um, bone. So what I want to do is reduce all of this. I'm going to turn on the see-through option, and that will allow me to get the back side in one pass from side view here. About the ear back, I'm going to reduce all this weight and remove all that weight. And then I just want to follow the jawline around. The jaw is a pretty bony area, and basically everything else. Just kind of scrub over the eyes, make sure I get everything and that should be uh, fine. I'm going to re-enable or uh, the see-through or disable the see-through option. I can remove some of the chest influence here and just kind of straighten this out on the back for the for the neck deformation bone. Now my deformation bones are named spine 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 so I'm going to select the deformation bone for the shoulder and you can see that its influence is way down into the chest area and that is something that I don't want. It's too far down. I'm going to remove all these weights. And I also want to remove the weights from the left side bone from most of the influence on the right here. So right down the center line. And remove this on the upper chest. Remove this in the back. Again, it's, it's reaching across the center line of my model, so I'm just going to reduce that as well. If we look how much it's influencing up into the neck, it is past that halfway point, so I'll paint these out, or paint them to zero weights. The next bone in the chain is the upper bone for the arm. Again, too much influence in the chest for that arm bone. I'm just going to cut across right underneath the armpit area. Do this a little bit. Well, these are very low weights, so it's not going to have too big of an impact, but I do want to have a cleaner starting point. If I look at how much influence it's going to the next bone, this is going to be fine. Up this direction, that'll be fine. Down that direction, that is fine. That's okay. This is okay. This is okay as well. Now I won't do the hands just to make this go a little quicker. I'll go back to the chest. If I select the chest, I just want to reduce, again, the influence up in the neck area. It's more than halfway up there. Do a little bit more than that. If we look down, halfway mark is about right there. Reduce that. Do the back side as well. I'm just following the topology line there. It makes more sense to do that. Let's do the back side. That looks fine. Now for the spine. Again, a lot of area or a lot of influence in the chest area. I basically want to just follow this topology lines here which outlines the main rib cage. And that will be decent. No get rid of all of these weights. I'm using X mirror so I only have to paint half of the mesh here. There we go. Now down into the hip area. Now this is just from experience. I know that the hips have a bony section out to the side here and a lot of uh, should be mainly influenced only by the hip so I'm going to go a little bit higher than normal over that halfway mark and reduce all of this weight, remove it all. I'm also going to remove all of the influence on the glutes from the spine. This should be under the control of the hip bone. 
I'll reduce the hip bone again halfway up to the back to the spine. I'll reduce this weight, remove it. Now this isn't going to make it look good for deformation. I'm just start trying to get a cleaner um, starting point. Halfway here. And we'll be doing some fine tuning later. Now this is where is causing that major cave in for the hip. So I'm going to be pretty severe with this. And this is again not following the halfway point but from experience I know that I need to remove most of this weight from that leg in this upper area of the hip. I also want to make sure that it's not extending to the other side over here. Take it out of the crotch area and I'm also going to take it away from the glutes so I'm just going to follow one of the topology lines around the glute area. Having it extend down that looks pretty decent this one extending up, that is actually going to be fine as well. The shin bone looks relatively good. It does have some influence a little bit too far on the foot for me. I will re remove some of that. The foot looks good up. However, it is influencing the toes rather weird and it's not in any way um, consistent. So I'm going to en enable the see-through option again and just remove all of this influence from the toes. can always add these weights back. Again, this is just to get a cleaner starting point. And if I select the foot, maybe a little bit of that to take away, and we're good. That cleanup pass is done, and we don't have to worry about the right side since we have X mirror enabled. We got that for free. And now, two more operations before this pass is complete. I'm going to do these passes in. Uh, edit mode. So I'm going to go to edit mode. I will go back out of wireframe. Now as I reduced or subtracted those weights, it did subtract the weights, however it did not delete the weights or remove um, those vertices from the spine bone. That is the neck bone here, spine.004. So rather than going through and clicking off of these and removing them, there's a tool that will do this very quickly. So I'm going to select all the vertices in this mesh find my weight tools and I'll find the clean operation. I will click that and then we just need to make sure that we're only cleaning the deforming uh, vertex groups. So if you have other vertex groups for particles and hair or things of that nature you don't want to do all groups. You always want to make it sure that it's only for the deforming vertex groups. Now what this is the limit you can set. Basically I just want to clean out all these zero weights. Anything that's zero or under there's no um, weights that are un under zero, so it's just going to clean those zero weights out. If I select those vertices up here, you can see that they are all gone now. And one more operation is to select everything again, and then I will normalize all. And again, we want to make sure that we are only normalizing our deforming vertex groups. So deform pose bones is what you want on the subset options, and uncheck lock active, so it'll get all of the. Uh, vertex groups, all the deforming vertex groups, and now if we go back into weight paint mode, we should have a nice clean set of uh, weights to start with, or a lot, a lot cleaner anyways. So that is the first pass, it is the cleanup pass, and next I will show you my patented way of going joint by joint and how I set up my weights and uh, finish off the weight painting. So until next time, good luck.